Here are some of the biggest pitfalls in spiritual growth. Let's get into it. Hello everybody, I'm Michelle Patterson and this is Angel Souls. And today we're going to be talking about what are the pitfalls? Where do you get stuck when you're trying to get onto a spiritual path, when you're doing spiritual growth? I've been doing spiritual, being a spiritual practitioner, I guess, and an angel medium professionally for 10 years. Prior to that, I was always spiritual. I was that weird little kid who could see dead people. Okay. Yeah, I was. I was that one. So <laughs> I, I'm very familiar with this and I've done my own mistakes, uh, even having a deep understanding and a deep connection with the spiritual realm. There are a lot of things that this human brain can get us entangled in or you know, there are certain conditions and conditioning that get us off track. So one of the first things I've always observed would be people being scared, <laughs> just being in a place of fear. And I think maybe that comes from spiritualism. Spiritualism, uh, in my mind, versus spirituality. Spirituality is about um, your own attunement, uh, you know, your connection to the divine. And spiritualism can be a connect, it is a connection to spirit, but it's often the frequencies closest to our density bodies. So it's more like fourth dimensional work. Very valuable. That's where you have your mediums who can help you get in touch with your loved ones on the other side. Uh, this is where you get more predictive kinds of things because they are closer to your, your density consciousness here, right? Uh, so sometimes that can still be tinged with a little bit of ego the spiritualism. And I think that throws people off. Okay. So, you know, you might picture a dark room, like heavy velvet curtains, a crystal ball, somebody who you, you wouldn't sit and necessarily have lunch with because they don't seem like they could hold a conversation with you because they're somewhere else. Okay. <laughs> like doing the whole thing. I understand. Now, I don't get intimidated by that kind of stuff because I understand I understand the work, but um, somebody who doesn't, who is just exploring might be very intimidated by that. So please understand, you know, you don't need to be afraid. Discerning always, right? If somebody is just spooky and you're just like, I don't know, I'm not into this, don't go there, okay? Or if you think that spirituality and your spiritual practice has to do with like, talking to ghosts and something and it freaks me out. It freaks me out. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't deal with no ghosts. Okay. <laughs> uh-uh. I do angel stuff. Thank you and good night. Go elsewhere for that. Okay. So <laughs> if that's what you think it is, you don't need to be afraid of that, but you do want to be aware that when you, this is probably where a lot of this fear and intimidation comes from as well. Once you start to open your own, if you want to see them as demons, your own um, traumas, you know, all that stuff can start coming up to the surface. Uh, you also do leave your energy field open. And if you're not careful, that's why I'm, I love working with archangels. I always say of God's purest love and light, which people say is going too far, but I don't think so. Put all the words out there. Keep, deflect all the darkness, okay, with your words. Your words are very powerful. But when you get into this, you do start to open your consciousness, you start to open your energy field. And if you aren't, say, in my practice, I would say, invoke Archangel Michael of God's purest love and light and to come in and shield and protect you as you go through your meditation. If you're not aware enough to do that, you could have attachments come in. Um, it's not always like an evil being or anything like that, but you, you know, it's like a, leaving your front door open. Maybe you don't have a robber come in, but you have a bunch of people coming in and eating your food. They're not here to hurt you, but they're making a mess, okay? <laughs> like, we don't need it, right? We want to keep that clean and pristine. So just keep that in mind. It's not something that is a guaranteed, you know, that you have to do spooky stuff. It's not that. And even if you found your way to this video and you're watching because you like making fun of people like this, I'm saying this because I can feel you. Hi. Uh, so <laughs> if you're here for that reason, that's cool. You stay where you are. I'm not trying to convert anybody. I would never do such a thing, but please remember this is maybe we're talking about the same thing, but using different words. Maybe for you, you would say, oh, this is like a relaxing practice. Um, 
you know, it helps with my cortisol levels. It helps ease my nervous system. However you want to see it, whatever benefit you get from it, there you go. That's it. We're just, we're talking about the same thing. All right. So there's that portion of it. The next thing that I see would be the quick, I don't know, the quick fix type thing. And this can be called, you know, spiritual sidestepping, spiritual escapism, where people are in such pain or in such confusion in their bodies uh, and in, in their minds that they just want to find an excuse. This is where we have people, you know, we talk about soul contracts and that's a thing, but sometimes people will go a little overboard and say, this happened to me because I have bad karma. Not necessarily. Karma can be good too. It's a balancing. Or, you know, I hear a lot of people being really fascinated with past lives. Nothing wrong with that. And it could be very beneficial. But if you're going and doing what we would perceive as past life, that's actually looking at uh, our timelines in a very third dimensional ego consciousness kind of way. Time is linear here. Outside of this dimension, it's not. So when we talk about Akashic Records, all your timelines are sort of existing. They're not happening all at the same time. They're existing at the same time. I got that from Dolores Cannon. Perfectly said. <laughs> Check out her work. Amazing. So when we start to look at that, we're looking for a reason sometimes. People who are just getting started. I want to look at my past life life uh, trajectory because I want to pinpoint where the trouble started or Again, finding an excuse. This is also where you get people going, oh yes, I've said this before in videos, but I'm going to say it again. Um, you know, I was a witch in a past life in Salem and I was burned at the stake. That might have to do with some psychological thing, which I'm not qualified to tell you about. Check with an expert. I don't know. But that's not what happened to the witches in Salem. They were hanged. So <laughs> people tend to just, you know what I'm saying? Like they're trying to go, oh, well, I'm spooky in this lifetime and I want to be a rebel. Therefore, I'm a witch from another time. Not likely. Not likely. If you're a rebel here, because, you know, like I just I'm pulling this from real examples. I'm trying to protect people's privacy. But, you know, people who are like rebellious, um, very into, you know, like witchy stuff, they want to assume that... It, you could have been a witch in a past life, past life, but usually when you incarnate or you bring energy, a piece of your soul that's split off and you're bringing it into another form, you're going to explore the opposite. You're going to explore something different. Not always. Sometimes you're trying to get um, one big umbrella lesson done, split out into many different variations. It gets complicated. I know it's, <laughs> it's a whole thing, but Somebody who is just trying to latch on to that, I usually think it's some, there's something else going on there. They're looking for some identity, and that's not the proper use of spirituality. It can also go into people, you know, because the spiritual realm includes people who, you know, believe that they are from other planets, star systems. You know, we're talking, I, I call them light beings because I always sense that they're not angelic beings, but they are kind and they're here to help us and, and all of that. But, you know, I have seen people really get sucked in by labels. And I've talked about this before in other videos. I'm going to address it again here where they wanted to be seen as an incarnated angel. Why is that important? You're human. You're supposed to be human. That's your job right now. Don't worry about what, what you're doing in some other, I don't know. I'm not going to sit here and say that mermaids don't exist. I've never seen one. I've got opinions about that, but who am I? I don't know the mind of God. I don't know what all is going on out there, <laughs> like whatever. But, you know, so believe what you want, but it's where people get really hung up on, I am this and therefore I can act this way. They might even go, I am spiritual, therefore I'm going to run away to Costa Rica. Poor Costa Rica. They don't want us there, I'm sure. I never talked to anybody from there, but I, I can imagine. Okay, like quit going in there and whatever. Okay, I'm about to go off <laughs> something else. But run off to Costa Rica to like hide away from whatever to fully embody your vision of the identity of spiritual. But are you doing the real practice? 
one of the things that happened when I got on social media and I started doing this as a profession, I was criticized quite often because I swear. <laughs> used to, then the algorithm changed. Now I got to watch my, my potty mouth. But I used to swear. Um, I'm, I'm real. I get mad. I get irritated. And people are like, you're not spiritual if you're not. No. Every, even if you're seeing those, it's not like I'm out there like verbally abusing people, but like I will call things out and because I'm straightforward and I'm not like soft spoken and just tiptoeing and da, 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 that somehow I didn't know what I was doing. And I was like, well, you believe whatever you want. Okay. <laughs> but like, I came into this incarnation to be relatable and to be grounded and to be real. And also it's really frustrating to be human. Don't you think sometimes, sometimes, okay, but we, we get these preconceived notions about, you know, what spirituality should look like and we're often missing the mark and so much so that we're getting off path. Why? Because we're hiding in Costa Rica. I'm sorry if you're from Costa Rica, I apologize on behalf of everybody in the United States of America. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, I know, but you know, you can't just hide behind that as your identity. Spirituality is not there to do that. It's to help you understand that as you are, you are enough. Whatever you have experienced, whatever you've done in your life, you can make amends. You can bring it back around. You can get back to, I was just telling somebody this, you can get back to your original self. The original self of purity, innocence, soul light that cannot be destroyed. Don't test me on that one. It cannot be destroyed. It's the original version of you in this storyline before anything started happening. We have the power to go back to that. But you can't get there if you are distracting yourself with labels. So that's another pretty big pitfall. The third pitfall that I see quite often would be people... Whether, I mean, this gets pretty varied as well, whether they are narcissistic types who had a traumatic background um, and then they've just devoted their entire life to convincing themselves and others that they are worthy by being outlandish and, you know, all that stuff uh, coming into spirituality and acting as if they got it faster than anybody else. Um, I was born in with a special soul. Um, I, I don't know. We could sit here all day with examples. We either have that. Okay, that's, or sociopaths. That's not a pitfall. That's just like red flag territory, okay? They're the ones who become the gurus. Why? They're charming. They're convincing. They're sometimes good actors. They can make you believe anything. And the biggest thing and how they get you is convincing you that you are not worth anything without them. That you need them, Okay. So that can be another thing, following the wrong guru, but more allowing the ego to come in. And I also, on the other side of the coin, I see people come in who have maybe for the longest, they've been scapegoated. They have been silenced, oppressed. They've never been allowed to express themselves. And then they find their point of power by getting in touch with their soul again and remembering that. And then there's something lost in translation. And this isn't a permanent thing. This is usually just transitory, but it'll hit up on the ego consciousness. And now they're going around bragging about all of the, all the work they've done and how advanced they are. And why can't everybody be as advanced as me? Everybody is on their soul's contract doing what they got to do. <laughs> right? So again, trying to embody outwardly this it kind of goes in with the other pitfalls, but kind of trying to outwardly embody what spiritual looks like so that you can convince yourself that you're spiritual, all while tapping into that ego to try to find your sense of self-worth. Spirituality does help you come back home to you. It does help you remember that you are enough just as you are, that you can change anything, that you are a powerful creature, <laughs> right? It does help with that. But not if you go off the rails with it. You know, not if you're using it as a tool to pump up your ego. The next pitfall I see, this would be number four, I do believe. 
people thinking that like they're not doing enough if it's not outward right like if they don't see like if they're doing all this manifestation and they don't see the manifestation outside of them right away that they've done something wrong there's a lot to manifesting there really is and many people might say oh it's so simple listen you can pull anything into your existence with your mind but if it's not anchored in the heart and if it's not a part of your soul's contract if it's not within the timing of that soul's contract and in the energy that you're surrounding yourself with it's not gonna happen okay it's or it's not gonna be permanent let's put it that way you have to be in alignment with it you can listen to people all day long with these manifestation law of attraction videos cool I like that people are talking about it but what I see not being spoken about there's no follow-up the people who claim that they manifested this big beautiful house within a year where are they now okay where are they are you still have it because if it wasn't a part of your contract to do that not that we plan it out to like such minute details but like you know what I'm saying like if you're not meant to be in that area around these people whatever it's not going to last the universe is ever correcting it's going to get you going in the direction that you need to go in okay doubting yourself what was that number five it's kind of four and five I don't know these are all kind of just like going together um <laughs> but five is constantly doubting that you're doing enough again that kind of goes in with the manifestation thing but always thinking you know I'm bad because I got mad today or I'm jealous and therefore I'm bad let me tell you something straight from the angels you're here to be human so this many times I'm gonna say it one more time maybe many times after this I don't know we are here to emulate creator or emulate source we come into these density bodies with our experiences tools to handle those experiences and we're taking on another timeline so we are here to experience duality consciousness to experience every bit of emotion that a human can experience that's why every single one of us we have good days and we have bad days we have big shining moments and we have tragedies we have traumas duality that's what we're here for so if you go into your spiritual practice and all this stuff starts unlocking Make sure you have proper support because that will hit you in a psychological way. You need to get with a good therapist, not just somebody who's a therapist. Get with a good therapist to help you with the brain part of it. Or if you do have physical things going on, check with a doctor. Make sure you're approaching all of this. Spirituality unlocks a lot of stuff. So you can't just unlock that stuff and then let it sit there. You know, you got to got to work on it from a human standpoint as well. But... All this stuff starts to get unlocked and maybe you're starting to feel angry about your past. Why would you blame yourself for being upset? It's a natural part of that catharsis. It's a stage of it. If you're sad, whatever, it's okay. Okay, you don't have to be happy all the time. And people who go around pretending like nothing bothers them, that is a red flag for a narcissist so dang fast or something. They're trying, that's gaslighting. I mean, they're trying to make you feel like you're not supposed to be having emotions and it's bad if you do. We got to stop that. A lot of our society is structured around that. So it's going to be a little bit of a shift to get away from that, but it's possible. Okay. So, I mean, I don't I lost count. What are we on six? I mean, I can do this all day, but don't fall into spirituality is your cure-all spirituality helps you remember peace and love and help you open up and realize that you are connected to a divine source that you do have spiritual helpers around you no it's not crazy to believe in that the people who <laughs> give me a little secret you want, you want a little secret secret about this industry you know, all those people that are out there going, that spiritual stuff, that's so stupid. Who would possibly, they're doing it. How do I know? They're coming to me for readings. People you wouldn't believe, okay? Yeah, I said it. There you go. I won't name them. I know that seems really shady, but I can't name them, okay? <laughs> but like, you know, don't let people downplay your access back to peace and harmony and your soul light 
and all of that. But remember, and the whole point of this video is that you can still connect to your soul self while balancing being human. And that means you're going to make mistakes. Coming in and trying to incarnate as a human and avoiding all mistakes or emotions. What's the point? What, what are you doing here? Why'd you show up to the party? <laughs> if you're not going to party. You're going to have to loop around and do it again. You can't escape this. And leave Costa Rica alone. Leave your comments down in the comment thing and, and let me know if you want me to make another video. <laughs> Thank you all so much for being here. I love you so much. Take care.